Please welcome to the stage, Larry Wilmore. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me okay? Great. Well, welcome. Man, what a nice night. Welcome to the uh, 2016 National Book Awards. Yes. That's right. Um, or as it's going to be called next year, the Trump National Luxurious Evening for Books Big League. That's right. Get used to it, everybody. Man, what a week. How was your week? This was very bizarre for me, I have to. Wasn't Tuesday night the most surreal night ever? I've been watching elections since I was a kid. I have never experienced a night like, I don't even have a word for it. A friend of mine actually said, that was exciting, wasn't it? I'm like, exciting? I don't know if I'd, I don't know if I'd use the word excite. It's exciting in the same way that an asteroid hurtling towards Earth is exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's spectacular, but I think we're going to die soon. Yeah. That's what it felt like, you know. It's hard to explain the feelings, you know. Like, I voted for Hillary. I'm a Democrat. I'll admit it. You know, Democrats, we were so happy at the beginning of the night, right? <laughs> History was going to be made, all those kind of things, you know. And by the end of the night, it was like everybody's dog had died. It, it felt horrible, right? I don't, you know, the only analogy that makes sense to me. It's almost, it felt as if like we were all opening a brand new like Samsung Galaxy Note 7, right? right? I'm like, man, this is a nice phone, right? Woo, can't wait to get it open. <laughs> right, because when you plug in that new phone and you start charging it, the only thing on your mind is, yeah, I wonder what time this phone is going to be ready for me to use, right? Not. I wonder if I'm even going to have a phone, and will my house be burned down to the ground? <laughs> That's what it felt like at the end of that night. It was so, so bizarre, you know. I think it is kind of unfair, though, for people to say that Hillary lost. It's kind of, well, I think she's going to win the uh, popular vote, right? Or she's ahead, like two million? A million and a half. Man. You know, it's also fair to say that Trump won. You know, I think Trump had more passionate people for him, especially in certain areas, than Hillary had for her. I mean, guys, come on. When you think about it, Trump had white people racing to those ballots like they were voting for the first white president. Let's be honest, right? <laughs> come on, Clem, let's go. <laughs> my fair only chance. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm a little worried, though, I have to admit. I'm a little concerned. I don't know. Is America ready for a white president? I don't know, once you go black, you know how it goes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> oh, thank you. But it is interesting, you know, even the, the coming Trump presidency is even affecting the uh, book world. I don't know if you guys knew this, but apparently bookstores have said that they're taking all copies of the Constitution and moving them from the government section to the fiction section. So, the, yeah. <laughs> That's, I know, it's very sad. <laughs> and all copies of Trump's books are moving from the nonfiction section to the horror section. I think that's appropriate. <laughs> I actually think that's appropriate. <laughs> and now, there's the other thing I can't believe. Now they're also taking classic books and they have to change the titles just to make it coincide with what's going on in the country right now. This really makes me sad. Like, The Great Gatsby is now going to be called The Terrific, and I mean Terrific Gatsby. <laughs> Too many words, right? <laughs> little women will now be known as little women who I'll be dating in 10 years. See, that's just. <laughs> oh, Lord, like I said that, right? <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is now the Hitchhiker's Guide to Canada. Oh, very nice. <laughs> it's actually very helpful. <laughs> Pride and Prejudice now has to be called Pride and Really Welcome Prejudice. Yeah, I censored myself a little bit. Right? <laughs> a Clockwork Orange. Now, uh, oh, actually, there's no change for a Clockwork Orange. Uh, <laughs> so, but, uh, that's, that actually is staying the same. 
And finally, this, is, this one really makes me sad. My favorite, uh, Dr. Seuss, The Cat in the Hat, now apparently has to be called Grab Him by the Pussycat in the Hat. So those are the books. Those are the books. <laughs> I didn't say that, you guys. That's actually not a bad word, though. So. All right, shall we get this evening started? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> actually, that was really a clean joke. It just sounded like a dirty joke. It really did. Yeah. I wasn't going to do that joke, but Billy Bush egged me on, so, yeah, I know, I know, he just, <laughs> this is going to be a fun night, I'm actually, I'm very excited to be here, I love books, I love the fact that we celebrate books, I've always said books may be our only evidence of a civilized society at some point, you know, and I'm starting to believe that could be true, um, so thank you, thank you everybody who's written a book, who's edited a book, who's published a book, and who has supported books, thank you very much. Um, no, it means the world to me. Um, in fact, just a real quick story. I sold books door to door one summer, and I wrote about this last year. And I'll just, I just will tell you real quick. At the end of this, this family couldn't afford the books. They were like a, a poor immigrant family. At the end of the summer, I left the books there for their kids and everything. It's one of the things that really changed my life and inspired me to do a lot of things that I'm doing. So thank you, book people, is what I want to say.